Uh, here I have a Pioneer receiver SX450 rather rusty looking case on it treble control is completely broken off and knobs gone missing this other knob function knobs lost its aluminium coating this was only a cheap one bit of this um, vinyl coming off the reason I bought this is because I have another one of these that I bought years ago and used to use it as a test amp in my workshop and the actual power switch on the back of this rotary speaker switch is faulty so I'm hoping this one's all right but I've just realized the sh shaft's actually bent on it so there's one problem I might have to try and gently bend that straight again but I thought I'd have a look at it and just see what condition this thing in is in it's very rusted on the back and disgustingly dirty But it may just be superficial damage. What's the underside like? Not too bad. So maybe it doesn't add liquid right through it. I think one of these end panels on my one is also the wrong one. Often it's like it's got two of the same end panel or something off one of these units. But I only paid eleven dollars for that one. I mean this this one actually cost me more at twenty dollars or something. So it'd be interesting to see if it still works. There's a fair chance if it's not completely corroded, it may still be in working order. Quite a nice little unit these things and they made like more higher power versions I think there's a 750 and a few other different models of these that just have maybe some more features and more power so we'll get the cover off and have a look so let's have a look inside this thing I think there's a, oh yeah we did take the end wooden panel part screws off and there may be other screws under these I forget I think these slide off Couple of big screws, the end just comes off. Oh yeah, then there's a a screw under here, one on each side I think. At least it's not looking too rusty, very dusty, but not rusty yet. Hopefully, as long as that power switch is good in it, it's the main thing I need. And I don't know if one of these wooden end panels could be fixed up a bit better than the one I've got, but it's all the vinyl's peeling off, it's like a layer of wood grain stuck on top of another layer of brown plastic there. But I guess that's better than nothing. Looking at the end where the tuner is, it does look alright inside, but well, some sort of this. Take these two screws off the back of the Panel, I think that's all there is. There is the one in the middle. No, nothing. And yeah, a lot of dirt in there. Thick dust. But surprisingly, that actually looks fine. I mean, the fact it's got dry dust in there, it's probably an indication that it's hasn't had liquid in it. It's just the case. I might take the bottom off as well. Since I have no idea on the condition of this thing, Best thing to do is inspect everything, and this doesn't have a power cord, but I think these have a, do these have an IAC connection? Oh no, this one's been cut off, I think the other one I had, I thought that had an IAC power connection, I could be wrong. But I had a feeling I had a plug-in power cord on the other one I've got, so maybe they changed something, or maybe I'm imagining that. I don't know what these are rated at, but I don't think they're much. Maybe 10, 15 watts a channel, something like that. Not a particularly powerful, you can see there's more TO220 type output devices, so it's not going to be particularly powerful. It does have quite a big transformer in it though, so it might be capable of a bit. I mean, it does have a tuner to run, but that doesn't use a lot of power normally. And that's about as good as you could expect a circuit board to be. No corrosion, no sign of it at all. One nice dry looking joint there, but it's only just halfway cracked around, I think. But yeah, that's in as good a condition as you could expect. It's often the case with these things. Sometimes they look absolutely terrible on the outside. I mean, I doubt it's done these contacts much good. Yuck, that's just filth. 
so none of that's going to be in the best condition. These speaker terminals are going to be interesting. I think I might better take that out and get the dust out of those. And we've got a, a voltage selector. Is this one of these ones? It's got a fuse in the middle of it. I might check that fuse. Because we don't want to t get 240 volts out of that if it's looking all corroded or anything. And it's often best to check no one's done anything dodgy with it as well. I guess I should really check it's the right rating. I should get back in the habit of doing that every time. Because you never know what people have played with. 1.5 amp for 240 volt. And we're in the 240 volt position. Doesn't hurt to check because there is a... I assume there's unplugs. Yeah, there we go. That's your voltage selector. And you just point it with this little cutout to the voltage you want. So we've got 240 showing there. It doesn't hurt to check stuff like that on equipment that you've got no idea the condition of. Just in case someone's played with it. Really, I should do that with every amp. Is check the, especially when they're accessible from the back, is check the fuses to make sure they've actually got the right ones in there and someone hasn't put a 30 amp car fuse in there or something. And yeah, a bunch of light globes that look like they've had a bit of use, but they're probably still intact, maybe. But yeah, I'm going to just take this outside and give it a quick clean out. Okay, I've got a power cord on it, got the worst of the dust out of it. Can actually see the output transistors and stuff. I guess one thing before I do it, I should check there's a bunch of fuses down in here. Five of them, in fact, as well as that one. Oh, I think I see a car fuse in here, actually. <laughs> That's why you check them, but you can tell because they've got big chunky bits of metal inside them. So let me have a look. It's already a blown fuse. We know we may have issues, so... But I wouldn't be surprised that that's got like a 20 amper in there or something, if that's what it looks like, and it looks like a... Looks like a dodgy fuse. They're meant to be 4 amp. I mean, you never know. Some of the old TVs and stuff use those style of fuses, but... It may be okay, but it is something I should really get back in the habit of... I used to always check these things in old amps and stuff. That's a 5 amp it says on the end, so it's not out of range that much, but it's got the big old, even though it's a thin bit of metal in between those sort of big blades in it. Like I say, normally out of a car or something, those sort of things. I doubt it's rated at 125 volts, they say it should be, but that won't matter in this case, I don't think. But anyway, none of them are blown, so I think it's safe to plug this in. There's no obvious sign of faults with it. The speaker terminals are really rusty, so I guess, well you can see the lights from above anyway on this. Oh, we've got two globes going. No smoke coming out. Well at least it looks like it's got a good power switch, which is a bit I want because it's a weird arrangement. Yeah, it is as weird as I thought it was. It's got like a shaft, almost like a wafer switch set up for the speakers an open one and then this grey switch bit on the end and yeah you undo a couple of little nuts and it slides off I thought it was a pretty weird thing like that I was wondering if I was dreaming but I was right that's exactly what I remember it being like in the other one that was dicky or basically I can't remember if it was open circuit I think it was arcing or something it did sort of work so I just soldered a wire across because I just used it as a bench test unit and I always turned the power on, on and off to the bench every day so it just came on when I turned the power on in the morning and went off when I turned it off of an evening and basically sat there all day if I needed an audio signal that was tuned into an FM station I could just grab line out it from it or if I had a line level I wanted to get into some speakers I just plugged into the line input and this would do the amplifying so yeah I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing somewhat works Although I think the speaker connectors are going to be pretty iffy on it. Let's switch it to A and B, I guess, even though same thing really. Being a bit careful because we've got potentially live, lots of live, all the back of that voltage selector switch, all those terminals. You've got two AC outputs, so she's got plenty of stuff trying to get you there if you're not careful where you put your fingers. Oh, these speaker terminals really are stuffed, I think. But the edges of them may not be too bad. We've got nothing on that one. Assuming we're even making a good connection to it. Uh, 
and nothing on that one. I don't think there's much point checking the other A and B, both of them, but since they're all hooked to the same set of output transistors, this thing might actually be half half going. We might have some very scratchy pots and switches in it. Oh yeah, even the um the input select switch there is two great big open wafer switches, so not even sealed up or anything. Got one of these nice big heavy flywheels on the tuning. So you give it a spin and it's got a bit of inertia there. Look at that. I love the feel of those things. They're really nice touching these sort of amps. That's why they got a good reputation because they actually do actually feel nice when you've got a big flywheel there. You're not doing all the work or wind, wind, wind. You can sort of give it a bit of a spin. Always a nice touch. But I mean, that's a great big piece. It looks like cast iron, so obviously cost more to build them that way. So I think what I'll do is I'll just plug some speakers into this and plug the CD player in and see if we get anything out of it. But like I said, don't expect miracles with these speaker connectors because they are pretty rusted, at least on the top surface. Like I say, the little edges of those things might be okay, but I, I have my doubts if there's that much rust, but I can see some of it still silver when I press on them. It's amazing how resilient some of this gear is. Some people think it's really fragile, but it's amazing how much abuse it can take, including, you know, the bad environment, water and the like, dampness. And oh, I'm going to plug a line signal in. Is that the CD? Yeah. Now this is going to be the next bit that's dodgy is... Oh, everything's tangled up. Is these input connectors. So we've got phone auxiliary. Maybe we'll run them in and out a few times, try and get the stuff off. Even just getting that dust off them has made them look a lot better than they did, but... Plugging in and out a few times. This is one of these rare ones that has all the inputs facing upwards, which is actually a good thing because if you're fiddling around behind it, it's actually easier to work from above a lot of the time. So let's make sure the volume's down. I don't know what speakers I'm on, so I'll go A and B. Yep, yeah, sounds a bit distorted and then goes to full volume. <laughs> Probably ain't doing the speaker much good, so I'll give that a squirt of cleaner. Not surprising, these are fairly open pots. There may be, is there a balance there as well? Oh, it's got a separate balance pot, that's okay then. That's one reason I probably should have put it in some dummy loads really, but where's the fun in that? Ooh. One channel's still pretty scratchy by the sound of it. Same hard tape wanted to switch, that was dicky. Why was it always on that song? So the tape wanted to switch, I think, might have been the problem there. I expected these switches to be pretty iffy. I'm not sure how I can get contact cleaner into that. Maybe through the top. Line it up and hope it comes out everywhere. The balance pot's fine, base is fine, treble's broken, so I can't do much of that, but it's working. Volume's still a bit, a bit iffy, so that may be beyond it. Give it another squirt of cleaner, I guess, a really good squirt. But that could be stuffed, I mean, this is only for parts, but it would be interesting to see how much I'll get it work. Still pretty bad. Phono's humming, so that's a good sign. FM, I'm not hearing much. That's FM. Oh, okay, muting off, so the muting is all that was. Sounds like it's gonna work. Fucking. It's not too happy. 
tuning cap was pretty dirty, so there's a station around there somewhere. Where's the antenna connections? It doesn't like turning all the way to the end either. Something's not happy with it. So maybe something's off. It doesn't help being alive, but does it turn anymore? Ooh. It's really trying to stretch the dial cord a bit. I think that's about the end anyway, which has got, got up to 108, so I think we've freed it up a little bit. But, have we got any reception? That seems to work. I am. Not seeing anything from the signal meter, but. The signal meter works in FM. No stereo light. So the signal meter is doing something. Oh, there it is, stereo. Ha! Just a reception. And the power light's blown by the look of it, not surprising. Better turn that off. Maybe it's just not enough AM signal. Oh, this has got a rod antenna, so. Oh, here we go. Maybe just moved a little bit. It's not sounding real good though. Might just be picking up a lot of rubbish. There was the sound of it. So we're very, very delighted to have you here. How appropriate to have you back for this particular exhibition. Can you please make our entire panel very well. Definitely pretty knackered. One channel's hissing and carrying on. Oops, still hissing and carrying on. disgusting condition it still works so uh, you can't keep an old thing down but this tuning cap is all the dial cord or the little gear on it something's iffy in the top end of the range possibly the dial cord slipped a bit or something I don't think so because it hits the bottom all right where are we that's yeah that's hit the bottom of the range and we're just below 88 It's getting quite tight there. Yeah, it went right up there this time. You can hear something squeaking there. Ooh, something's... Well, it can't be the pulleys, I don't think. It's got to be the tuning cap, surely. 
Ooh. all this knob maybe this knob's generally stiff actually the more I feel it it was free running before so why is it it's not pushing on the perspex or something this whole thing's stiffened up now oh well I've wrecked it completely oh it did free run before or is it oh, I wonder if the cord's tightened up or something that's what it feels like Maybe me feeling with it is done something weird. That pulley turns, that pulley turns. I guess there's one down the other end of the dial somewhere. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, there's two of them down there. I'll make sure the power's off. Yeah, they seem to be free. Hmm, interesting. Well, I shouldn't have played with that because now I've ruined it. Seems like the bearings... Or is it just the string? The string's not super tight. It's not like it's I can play a tune on it or anything. Ugh, pull that knob off and see what the hell we've got. I wonder if just the shaft is seizing on the... There's like a brass shaft goes through another little brass collet thing that it's screwed to the panel with. Oh yeah, it's not happy now. But anyway, I set out to prove what I need to prove. Unfortunately this is probably going to be a scrap machine anyway. But amazingly, it, besides one blown globe there and one little globe... How does that come out? It's stuck in some sort of rubber block. There it is. One little globe for the... Oh, they've got these little twist things to hold them. So you can unscrew it and change these lead lamps. I think these are a 12 volt, but a bit hard to know from that. So one blown power light, one blown tuning light. And that's it, I wonder what these sort of globes are. Probably little screw-in ones, are they? Oh, they're, they're um, wedgies. Ooh, oh, okay, it's a wedge lamp that's been soldered to. Oh, I might as well see what voltage that is, I guess. Ooh, probably should disconnect, or turn the speakers off, I guess, would be the smart thing to do. All right, damage one of them with all that crackling. Is it AC or DC? Usually AC in these things, but... Gonna be AC. If I can connect to it, that's a six volter. Well, seven, so it could possibly even be eight volts running through the line here, but. And I assume the power light, well, that's gonna run in parallel with these. I mean, it's a bit silly having a power light in something that's got a light up dial anyway. Because the fact the dial lights up comes on with the power light anyway pretty much proves it's got power but I guess they blow eventually those globes but that's about it really it's nothing very exciting at all what have we got a pair of D313s again I think one of the other ones I looked at had a pair of D313 outputs more of in that Pioneer 500 or whatever it was SA500 or something amp so it's basically the same thing as that probably all got a very similar design in these older ones I say not even a complementary pair of output transistors NPN and PMP it's just two NPNs some tantalum capacitors I can see in there and again probably find all the capacitors are perfectly fine in this thing but at least I know I've got a good um, power switch it doesn't even matter that the shaft's slightly bent on this one other than that, yeah, well, they're not the best knobs, unfortunately. They might clean up half decent. They might be good for someone. Yeah, it's lost a bit of the silvering, I think. They're a handy spare part. I don't think much else, and it's probably much good for anything, to be honest. But I am impressed these connectors have held out. FMD emphasis, 25 microseconds, 50 and 75. So there you go. You can adjust that. 
I think that's to do with the slightly different FM systems. Um, yeah, not much else to see. At least, at least I know what I've got here. Is a good unit and it's got the good power switch, which is the main thing I need because I, I didn't bother pulling the other one apart. I guess I should have had a look inside. We might even do that when I dig that one out. I've only got that one set up as a display unit, so I've got some old tuners and stuff and just sit them there with the lights on because they look cool. But um, I haven't used it in quite a few years now, so it'll be interesting if I can get that going again. I wonder if I could, yeah, well, maybe I can um, just bypass, pinch the switch out of this one. I don't, I've got a different amp I use now anyway, but this could actually be turned into another workshop unit. This would be the ideal candidate in a way. I don't really care about the tuning because if I could just get that tuned to one station, I don't care about a broken treble control. This actually would make an ideal test amp for a workshop or even a shed amp or something because as long as it works, the only bit problem being if you can't turn it on and off easily, but there's always the PowerPoint, switch on the PowerPoint for that, I guess. Or like I used to switch the circuit breaker off for the whole circuit. But yeah, it's in surprisingly good nick. I think the front panel on this is uh, it's got a few marks. It's quite good, or is that just a bit of paint or something? I think that's a scratch. So it could make a good donor for a few parts or other ones. But anyway, thanks for watching.